Good evening. Open your Bibles to Titus, Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Titus 3. It's going to be a simple message tonight. Uh, Titus 3, verse 8. Titus 3, verse 8. Okay, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. All right, so, subject of tonight is good works, <laughs> maintaining good works. All right, so, this was written to Titus, who would have accompanied with Apostle Paul. Uh, on numerous occasions. In particular here, Titus has been sent to Crete to set in order things that were wanting, or in other words, things that were lacking, uh, according to chapter 1. Um, so he was in particular tasked with seeking out bishops or seeking out uh, among the Cretans and the congregation there um, that in the, well, in particular the one congregation, but in also the multiple that they would have had with an on island um, bishops or pastors um, over which they would basically lead the sheep there, uh, lead the lead the believers. And of this congregation, we're told that verse twelve of chapter one um, it says. Uh, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said that the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies, and this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Okay, so here's here's your pool of uh, you know potential leadership. It's uh, liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies. Okay, so not, <laughs> not a very good pool to choose from. But the thing is that you have the grace of God working there in and through them uh, as they have come to knowledge of uh, salvation through Christ Jesus. And he was set there uh, by Apostle Paul to be able to go ahead and set in order things that are wanting. In particular, would have been with them, uh, as we're going to see uh, throughout what we're going to look at tonight, the fact that they didn't work, or they didn't have a very strong work ethic. Because uh, that's something that he's going to constantly affirm here. To this point in his writing to Titus, with regard to addressing not only the fact that you're, I've sent you here to address things that are lacking here, are the things that you're supposed to be looking for uh, within leadership, or in other words, are to help develop this would uh, of the pool that you have. Um, speaking particularly uh, that the he's, the. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, not striker, or excuse me, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, then holding fast the faithful word if he had been taught that he may be able, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, uh, among other things, as far as he give the character, the, the character qualities of someone that would be um, fit for spiritual leadership as a pastor. Um, he also addresses the congregants, or in other words, uh, the, the believers that would be there under this leadership, which in beginning of chapter two, he says, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. In other words, the things that are becoming of sound doctrine. And that is, for this express reason, um, and he gives the different interpersonal relationships that we would have or that you would find within any given congregation, which is of husbands, of wives, of children, of those that would be masters or employers, uh, as I guess would be the most closest relationship that we have. Uh, we don't really have the same slavery set up um, in, our, in our society as they would have had. Uh, and then as also not only uh, the masters, but also as the servants, those that would be under, I guess, under employment. Um, and 
this would be the main um, draw, the main, the main point that he's trying to bring out is that in verse 2, chapter 2, that the aged men be sober, brave, temperate, and sound in faith and charity and patience, and the aged women likewise, uh, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, uh, that they may uh, teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And we can go through and we'll see everything here, but <coughs> he's instructed to set an order, in other words, find leadership that fits this character quality or these character qualities, and you speak sound doctrine or speak that which be, is appropriate to sound doctrine. And the purpose is that as we're seeing here, this is kind of synopsized, is that your life will reflect the glory of God or grace of God. And um, that's kind of what we're going to look at with why we are to maintain good works. Okay? Um, verse 10, where he, he talks about not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of our uh, God or of God our Savior in all things. And then verse 14 in chapter 3 where he states, And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. Okay, I'm jumping ahead a little bit from my outline, which I haven't given to you guys yet, but that is this. Sound doctrine has practical application to it, and there's fruit to it. Um, sound doctrine is going to produce something of value or worth to it. When you see um, the Lord Jesus in the Gospels where he speaks in the Sermon on the Mount with regard to the false teachers, uh, he makes a very um, pointed statement that by their fruits you shall know them. And this is with regard to false teachers. Not that This isn't addressing, you know, people that have made profession of faith, but rather it is that you have teachers that uh, assert themselves and either for personal gain or just because they, uh, they've opened themselves up to be a, a tool of Satan, uh, to twist people or to veer people off from uh, basically from walking with God will assert things or teach things that the fruit of which is destruction in their life. The fruit of which uh, is, I guess, the way the um, Solomon put it is that uh, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Uh, you're going to have ruin. And so God's teaching or God's doctrine God's instruction uh, is, as Solomon would put it, uh, it's the path of life, and there's no, you know, there's there's no there's no thorns to it, there's no ruin to it. Uh, it is best pleasing. Uh, Paul wrote to the church at Rome, in particular, that with regard to God's will, that it is perfect, it is acceptable. Uh, and that it's good. In other words, it's you're not gonna you're not gonna get any better than it. It's obviously perfect, and also that it's good or that it's well pleasing is the idea. In other words, it's it's what's gonna satisfy is what's gonna bring contentment. And so he is commanded throughout by Apostle Paul, uh, Titus that is, to affirm constantly that we are to maintain good works. And here are the reasons why. Okay, One, these things are good and profitable unto men. Good works are good and profitable unto men. In other words, they are going to have an actual concrete benefit to them. Um, now, which men would that be that he's speaking of that is going to have profit to The, the, that he's 
Did he specify? No, in other words, okay. Who's benefited? Which men are benefited by that? Yeah, basically everybody is. In other words, he doesn't give a distinction as to whether it's saved men mm -hmm. or unregenerate men. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's good unto all men. Now, that is a reflection of the character of God in that God is good. He reigneth upon the just and the unjust. Um, we know God is angry with the wicked every day. But as he told Ezekiel, uh, he takes no delight in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way. Turn ye, turn ye, saith the Lord, to the wicked. In other words, he calls all men to himself. His desire is that all men would be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Um, Jesus said of himself that if he be lifted up, he would draw all men unto himself. Uh, God is at work to draw people to himself. He has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, he's committed unto us, obviously, as well, with that ministry, the word of reconciliation. And uh, now then, we beseech you. Uh, <laughs> now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, and we beseech you. Wow, I can't believe it. Do you Yes, but no, 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 no. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And as the God did beseech you by us, we pray in Christ that be reconciled unto God. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that verse. So God has committed unto us the word. He's committed unto us the ministry of the reconciliation. And then he is calling out, we call out on behalf of Christ, uh, to men to be reconciled to him. Now, mind you, there's a twofold application. It's primarily, obviously, to draw the unsaved. But he wants... Christians, obviously, to be stirred up. We're to provoke one another to love and to good works, and we are to draw an eye. And so we are to encourage one another to obviously walk with God, to be drawing an eye, to maintain a uh, close fellowship and relationship with the Lord. Uh, now, how does good works apply to that? Right? It's a reflection of who God is. It's a reflection of God's character. It's a fulfillment of our intended created purpose, which was to glorify God. Prior to the fall, as with everything that God had created, which when he looked at, it was very good. And even after the whole process, he looked upon it and it's very good. It's supposed to reflect who he really is. Now we have marred that because of sin and we though we still maintain the image of God in us because we are created after his image and his likeness um, yet marred by sin um, the thing is as we not only trust him but also as we yield to him afterwards as believers uh, we are going to be fulfilling our purpose and that is glorifying him lifting him up on high so Good works, our good works that we are to maintain are profitable unto all men. So there's a there's a benefit to go to, we already seen this, um, verse 14 in chapter 3, just a little bit further down. That is, and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, uh, that they be not unfruitful. Um, in particular, he's addressing here, the fact that there is obviously necessary things that you have to do with regard to, you know, in, they have jobs, okay, they had needs that needed met. Now, Apostle Paul, and then he would address to the church at Corinth with regard to how ministry is supported, and that was through the giving of God's people. Um, he himself would, by his own personal testimony, restrict to some degree with not only the Church of Corinth and a number of the other churches, uh, even though he was given gifts and he was supported uh, in some measure, but he would uh, restrict in some degree what he would receive so that he would work that 
have to give to those that would be in need and also that he would meet his own personal need. We saw that in, in the book of Acts that he was a tent maker in particular as, uh, as a trade, as a tradesman is what he had. And then when he met Priscilla and Aquila after they had been recently kicked out of Italy and then sent, uh, sent back to Asia. So he would work and he admonished here that for necessary uses, meaning I need to pay bills. <laughs> I need to do stuff that I'm not going to be able to have availability of funds for by somebody just giving me. So maintain good works that you would have for necessary uses and then also that we would not be unfruitful that we would not be unfruitful. All right. God wants to bless not just limited here, okay, to our lifespan on planet Earth, but rather uh, what we live, not just what we live for, but what we do in the name of, of the Lord uh, in yieldedness to His Spirit he promises that we are gaining reward. Wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, precious stone. And so when we stand before him at the judgment seat, uh, those things are going to be put to the test. They're going to be put to fire. And obviously that which is gold, silver, precious stone is remaining. Wood, hay, stubble will burn. Um, yes, we have reward here, but we have that which is on high uh, as well. Um, an inheritance incorruptible and filed that fadeth not away. That also we have opportunity to be able to gain so that we could not only just you know, cast up at Jesus' feet, but that I believe during, not just during the millennium, but also further down, that we would be able to enjoy. I mean, obviously the draw of heaven is there's great things there, <laughs> but it's going to be primarily just the Savior. I mean, that's we're looking, you know, we're looking, to, we're looking to the Lord for that. But He promises that we have reward that we can gain, and so maintaining good works, yes, it's profitable for men, but it's also, I guess you could say, profitable for us, in that we not only would have to be able to meet for necessary uses, but we would. We can be fruitful. In other words, we can gain reward. Um, even a cup of cold water given in my name, or in other words, given in Christ's name, God's not going to overlook that. God's not going to forget. God's not going to uh, dismiss as something that is insignificant or trite. Uh, that which is done for the name of Christ and that which is done in yieldedness to His Spirit by faith uh, is going to be rewarded. And so, maintaining good works, there's a profit to it for others, there's a profit to it for us. And then, well, we'll go to verse 10 of chapter 2. Uh, this is finishing out, well, we'll st start at verse 1, so we can get the context, but um, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, or what's befitting, what's appropriate, fitting for sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Uh, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, uh, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Uh, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. Okay, now here's the areas which he particularly is wanting to address of the all things, showing thyself a pattern of, in, in all things. In particular, he wants to specify that is in doctrine, uh, particularly showing uncorruptness, so purity of doctrine. Gravity, in other words, a seriousness. Sincerity, honesty, sound speech that cannot be condemned. Boy, is that ever a big one. 
yeah? uh, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them all in all things, not answering again, not purloining. Okay, so don't be a slacker. Don't be a thief of the clock. Um, well, that would that that's really most uh, uh, applicable to us, uh, if, unless unless you're uh, unless you're salary. So the, the clock illustration wouldn't really apply. Uh, but showing all good fidelity. Uh, so you, as he put it to the church at Colossae, uh, you serve the Lord Christ. In other words, you do as unto the Lord, not as a man pleaser with eye service. Um, now, here's the purpose that he gives us: it that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, while looking for that, uh, looking for that. Blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify him to himself, a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Um, <laughs> just in these few verses in this chapter, and even into the, how many times did he even use that term, good works? It seems kind of quite frequently. Um, it seems to be something that is kind of important. Again, this isn't to be downing anybody or pedantic, but it is important how we communicate uh, the truth of God. Uh, the reason why is, uh, as stated earlier, we are ambassadors for Christ and we're representing Him. His name is upon us once we receive the Lord Jesus. Uh, he has adopted us into His family and He's put His name upon us. Uh, now that seems like it's a great responsibility and it's like, well, how in the world can I even do that? Uh, being that I'm frail and I'm sinful. Uh, and that is accomplished primarily just by yieldedness. Uh, in Romans 6 and 1 Corinthians 15, it is, as Paul wrote to the Church of Corinth, uh, if I keep in remembrance that which I, if you keep in remembrance that which I preach unto you, how that Christ died, it. according to the scriptures, it, he was buried and he rose again from, uh, from the dead three days, uh, according to the scriptures, um, that you, you would be saved. In other words, that you are kept from being able to go into sin. In other words, you are rescued from even entering into sin as you keep in remembrance the death, burial, and resurrection, which is, it's Romans 6 all over again, which is that I died with him, I've been buried with him by baptism, and I've been risen to walk in newness of life. In other words, I'm free when sin comes knocking at my door, when sin comes to tempt me, I don't have to yield to it, so I don't have to obey it, and I can walk freely to fulfill the will of God. So, the adorning, that is my actions, my life, my words, my attitude, how I demonstrate God's working and God's truth in my life to others. Um, there's a working that he has for us. Obviously, yes, we get into his word, uh, we learn from it, we yield, we respond. Um, you know, if we find ourselves in a deviated position where obviously I'm not aligned with where God wants for me, then confess it, break, if you will, and submit. You'll become aligned with Him. And then at that point, move forward. And that is where good works come in. Okay, so our good works are a, a way to adorn uh, the doctrine of God and it's for the express purpose of demonstrating who God is, which is our, our, our main, main purpose here, uh, to not just the unregenerate world, uh, but to other believers. It's encouraging uh, 
Uh, I know just for me personally, when in an area where it's greatly deficit of, of, of strong believers, to find believers that are not just in the Word of God, but you know, obviously praying and then wanting to seek to live a holy life, that you know, hey, this it's worth it. You know, it's it's worth living for it because God's real. There's others that are out there. It encourage, encourage, it motivates me. Uh, and then as well as the unbelievers, um, the fact is God wants to use your life to win people. Right? That's what we've been not just tasked with and what we've been entrusted with, but God wants that and he will reward that. So we have benefit. Uh, benefit to men. It's good and profitable unto men. Uh, we not only for necessary uses, but also that uh, we would not be unfruitful. So, Lord, God wants us to be fruitful. We can't have fruit. We will have reward and the adorning of the doctrine of God, so that and I know it seems repetitive, but the fact is, so that Christ would be known. And so, as He stated. This is a faithful saying, these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Um, how careful or conscientious are we to maintain good works? Again, it's not to draw attention, well, I don't know that I address this, but it's not drawing attention to us, but rather we're just a vehicle to draw attention and bring attention to the God working in us, the God that lives in us, uh, the Holy God that has given His Word, the Holy God that is active in our life, uh, we're drawing attention to Him. And we're, we're a vehicle, yes, uh, but let's be the vehicle that brings glory to His name, that accurately represents Him, and God promises blessing and reward for that uh, beyond just the benefit of the fact that, of seeing God use you and you know um, seeing people come to him uh, as being a vehicle but also uh, we would not be unfruitful Amen. So let's, let's pray Father thank you for this evening uh, Lord I pray that you help me to be ever so mindful that daily uh, during your doctrine uh, Lord in, in appropriate manner, Lord, of manner that's befitting you, Lord, that uh, you would use us, I pray, Lord, now as we make our ways home from here tonight, uh, let's get home safe, and that uh, we would have uh, just a good week, a fruitful week, Lord, and that you would give us many divine appointments this week. Uh, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Dismissed. Thank you.